Tour Down Under will reach fever pitch today and tomorrow. The pocket rocket Caleb Ewan was brilliant, wasn't he? Absolutely amazing. But Richie Port, the tiger from Tasmania, can he finally do it? He's got a very, very small lead. He's in the ochre jersey as uh, they head into the penultimate stage of the Tour Down Under and to break it all down for us, former winner back in 2004, Patrick Yonker in Adelaide. Richie Port, I tell you what, he's the crowd favourite, Patrick. Yeah, Richie's once again has come here in superb form. Uh, the South African Darrell MP is only three seconds away. Uh, mathematically speaking, anything can happen, but I, I think at the moment it's a two-horse race and they're really going at toe, to, toe for toe. So today's going to be a very interesting day because of the bonus seconds. Uh, there's six seconds on the road and ten at the finish line. Darrell is a better sprinter than uh, Richie. We know Richie's the best climber. Darrell's a bit quicker on the flat. So it's going to be an interesting day and the lead could well change. Yeah, well, Darrell Impey going for three on the trot, but uh, he needs to do his work today, doesn't he? Because um, tomorrow, uh, Wollonga Hill, he really is the king of Wollonga Hill, Richie Port. Yeah, that's right. Richie is unbeatable. Um, even the, the pros, can, it's hard to explain how Richie is so good on that particular climb. So, yeah, you're right. Today, with the bonus seconds, there's two sprints before they get to Victor Harbour. And Daryl's team, Mitchelton Scott, have a really good lead-out team. So I, I know they're strategically a very strong team. Um, Daryl will try and get a second or two along the road and could well, I think, Daryl could well be in the ochre jersey tonight. So even though today doesn't look like it's terribly difficult, there's only one big obstacle, the crow's nest, which is a climb 15 kilometres from the finish. Um, it's it's going to be an exciting exciting stage. What would normally be a kind of a, a little bit of a boring stage has just changed because of the bonus seconds. And um, Richie's got the ochre jersey, but I believe tonight South African Daryl could well be back in, uh, be in the Oka jersey, but then tomorrow on Wollonga Hill could well change again. So it's, it's very exciting two days of racing. Yeah, it's a big weekend. Uh, how has it helped with the spirits of uh, those in South Australia? Uh, the way the tour down under works, of course, it is in the city of Adelaide, but also uh, the surrounds, the Clare Valley, the Barossa, and McLaren Vale, and Murray Bridge yesterday, some of the areas that have been really badly affected by bushfires. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been a little bit haunting uh, myself. I've ridden through the uh, the race route and the riders themselves coming back from the stages. Um, some of the comments were how quiet it is in the Adelaide Hills. So yesterday's stage that went through some of the fire affected areas, the riders were commenting uh, there were no sounds of bird life. Um, th there was absolutely was eerie feeling, even though the guys are racing and they're racing hard and concentrating, focusing. Um, the, the charred ground, all the trees were burnt and uh, they said it was so quiet it was all they could hear was the spinning of the wheels and the riders talking amongst themselves and um what the Tour Down Under has also been about is getting people out there uh, to support the race, but not only to support the Tour Down Under, but also support the local communities, you know, the cafes, the restaurants. So there's been a real big push to get um, the spectators out in the hills. And, um, yeah, let's bring some money back into some much-needed business, the businesses that have really suffered and uh, may all suffer for, for a long time to come. So the Tour Down Under is not only about the bike race, but also, you know, let's help the local economy in the Adelaide Hills. And they have been doing it. Spectator attendance has been great. Yeah, and if you're anywhere uh, near there over the weekend, get down and have a squeeze. It's great. What about Caleb Ewan, this little pocket rocket? Uh, a few years ago, he was, uh, you know, he was earmarked as uh, the next best thing. He's really starting to realise that potential. Oh, absolutely. Look, Caleb, once again, scintillating form. I mean, he made a mistake on stage one. Um, Sam Bennett from Ireland uh, uh, took the stage, went off him. Um, I believe Caleb Ewan, you know, still relatively young uh, sprinter, could well uh, become uh, Australia's greatest sprinter of all time and, and um, beat Robbie McEwan's record. I mean, uh, Robbie McEwan is known as Australia's uh, greatest sprinter, but Caleb is such a versatile rider. Uh, two stage wins already this week. Um, today would would. Caleb and possible third stage win but there's a climb called the Crow's Nest 20 kilometres from the finish in Victor Harbour and that climb may well prove to be a little bit too much from Caleb but Caleb once again has started the season off in, in fine form and uh, I think we'll see a lot of Caleb at the Tour de France. Uh, Caleb could well become uh, the world's number one uh, number one sprinter. It's a shame that the sprinter Viviani from Italy crashed out early uh, and is not 100% but um, look Caleb is unbeatable when it comes to a sprint. All righty, now let, let's turn to the Olympics, an exciting year in Tokyo and Australia traditionally has done very well in cycling, we've won plenty of medals, including Mike Turter who was part of that pursuit team 
and this is his last tour down under after 22 years, so we wish him all the very, very best. But your team captain. Yeah, look, I um, you know work with the team, team USA, and um, uh, half of our team uh, is the Olympic team, pursuit team, preparing for the Tokyo Olympic Games, and uh, we're all talking tour down under. But it's Olympic year. The Tokyo Olympics will be in July. Obviously, uh, all the Aussies will be out there um, cheering on um, our team, pursuit team, who are out there to beat the Brits. So it's going to be a very big year for the Australian track team. And yeah, yesterday, uh, Kel O'Brien, one of our um, world champions. And team's pursuit has crashed heavily and um, has uh, suspected broken collarbone. So that's definitely unfortunate. An Olympic athlete in the Olympic year breaking um, anything is not, not a great preparation. But it's January. The Olympic Games are uh, late July. Um, he will recover. It's a setback for the Olympic team, but um, you know, with with so many months to go, the, these riders will be rehabilitated uh, rapid, quickly. They've got a great um, medical team, and uh, I hope to see Kel O'Brien there in Tokyo with Olympic gold medal around his neck, and he'll forget his unfortunate incident uh, at this uh, Tour Down Under. Absolutely, we've seen some remarkable comebacks. Probably the top of the pile would be Anna Mears, but uh, gold, bronze, and silver, no doubt, will be coming from the Velodrome for Australia and on the road in Tokyo. Always good to catch up, Patrick. Enjoy the rest of the tour down under.